Hi guys, I'm going to read to you in the light of events of Assyria what has been happening in Gaza recently as the world's attention has been distracted with Syria, although not a distraction, however. I'm going to read an account from the website Justice for Germans, the bombing. Who started what and who did what to whom? The commonly sprouted lies of Hitler did this, that and the other are put to death. The information that is now being revealed to set the Germans free. The next video, it's a very long PowerPoint that Yah has been working on for a couple of days. I'll read this first. This will go up as an introduction to the following lengthy PowerPoint that really explains all. Hang on, in the hearing of this, it, it, I, I can't even stand to read it, but I will because these are the atrocities that were committed on Germany by the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. Remember, it's Churchill, a Jew. For nine years before the war, he was supported by the Jews. He was a gambler, um, uh, what a, a counterfeiter. He was an alcoholic. And he squandered his own fortune. So in order to prepare him for their role as their butcher, they supported him for nine years financially. And what's that? Been? On a huge estate. Yes, he had a huge estate. It was the, 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 the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the bottom line is Churchill, the monster for Britain, uh, fronting for the Jews, who call themselves Jews and not. And of course, behind it all are Rothschilds. You've all seen the photographs circulating. Everything is being. This was. This is what the revelation is all about. It's the revealing of all truth. It has been. A like a freight train, it has been gathering momentum since the crisis reborn to the earth on January 11th, 1944, into the resurrection. Reincarnation is resurrection. Everybody's been here before, and all have gathered for the judgment. So, listen to this and uh, bear in mind what you're hearing in this leading into. The next PowerPoint. Who started the bombing of civilians in World War II? Was it Hitler or Churchill? Most presume it was Hitler's Germany and have been conditioned to believe that, along with many other lies. Most also believe that England was bombed in the same manner and degree as Germany. They would be wrong. He's referring to a slideshow in this site. I've just uh, saved this page as a web page, so I'm reading the text only. But these are all available at the Justice for Germans site. Just quoting from the first slide, who was the first to bomb civilians in World War II? Well, everyone knows it was Hitler, dot, 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 duh. Really, in fact, everyone who claims that would be wrong. Quoting. Hitler only undertook the bombing of British civilian targets reluctantly three months after the Royal Air Force, that would be Britain, had commenced bombing German civilian targets. Hitler would have been willing at any time to stop the slaughter. Hitler was genuinely anxious to reach with Britain an agreement confining the action of aircraft to battle zones. That was quoting J.M. Spate, CBCBE, Bombing Vindicated, page 47, Principal Secretary to the Air Ministry. Churchill was obsessed with getting America into the war. This is another quote. He tried to frighten Roosevelt with the prospect of an early German victory. He searched for an outrage such as the sinking of the Luzerne in the First World War. That would arouse American public opinion. German bombing of British civilians might well achieve this. But for weeks, it looked as if the Germans had no intention of being so obliging. That was a quote from the first casualty, Philip Knightley, Andre Deutsch, London, 1975. Then the first breach of international law. This raid on the night of May the 11th, 1940, although it's in itself trivial, 
was an epoch-making event since it was the first deliberate breach of the fundamental rule of civilized warfare that hostilities must only be waged against the German combatant forces. Their flight marked the end of an epoch which had lasted for two and one half centuries. That was FJP Veal, Advance to Barbarism, page 172. I want you to bear in mind with everything that has been, all of the lies being exposed in the warfare of this last 100 years and in particular since the Persian Gulf, round one with George Bush Sr. All of the lies and how the Americans and the Britons, NATO, have conducted their warfare against the innocents, the slaughter of the innocents. Another quote, this first area attack of the war was carried out by 134 British bombers on the German city of Mannheim on the 16th of December 1940. The object of this attack as Chief Marshal Pierce, Air Chief Marshal Pierce later explained, was to concentrate the maximum amount of damage in the center of the town. That was from the Strategic Air Offensive against Germany, London, 1961. So that's the um, backdrop to what else I'm going to read. There's a discussion on the kinds of aircraft that we use. The fact is Germany never developed long-range heavy bombers designed for this purpose, as the British and Americans did well in advance of the war. German bombers were much smaller and designed for tactical support of ground troops and tank warfare. If Hitler had really wanted a war and had planned to take over the world, as we are told, do you not think he would have developed such planes? And if the US and Britain were really such champions of peace and so concerned with humanity, why were they always preparing for war and in such a way that they could do maximum damage to civilian populations? Then there's a uh, speech, it's a video, Hitler in his own words, that is not on this page because it's a, then it has the bombing of Karlsruhe and then an interview, another video, um, I'm only reading text, quoting Churchill said to the Germans in 1945, we allies are no monsters, this at least I can say on behalf of the United Nations to Germany, peace though based on unconditional surrender, will bring to Germany and Japanese immense and immediate alleviation of suffering and agony. So that's what Churchill was saying to the Germans. So let's get back to the reality of what actually happened. Also at this site there's an account of a man still alive who more recently gave an eyewitness account to how the Germans of course were treated when the Allies uh, invaded and they were in, uh, they were prisoners of war, the conditions that they were treated, versus how the Jews who were rounded up for their own safety into the camps were treated by Germany as long as they could be treated with enough food and uh, you've all seen the videos by now probably of the, the hospitals and all the facilities that were available, swimming pools and theatre and um, being able to write twice a month and even their own currency, etc., 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 and of course, not to mention the videotaped testimony of Jews who are actually telling the truth versus the eight that they uh, bandy about all the time, uh, proven liars, one an actor, etc., etc., etc. So, listen to this: during the war, more bombs by weight were dropped on the city of Berlin then were released on the whole of Great Britain during the entire war. Did you get that? More bombs by weight were dropped on one city of Berlin, then were released on the whole of Great Britain during the entire course of the war. All German towns and cities above 50,000 population were from 50 to 80 percent destroyed. Dresden, an unprotected city, was incinerated with an estimated 135 civilian inhabitants burned and buried in the ruins. Hamburg was totally destroyed and 70,000 civilians died in the most appalling circumstances, whilst Cologne was likewise turned into a moonscape. As Hamburg burned, the winds feeding the three-mile-high flames reached 
twice hurricane speed to exceed